Hi friends, so today we are going to discuss telemedicine practice guideline. What are the hardware and software that doctor need to have before starting telemedicine practice? Myself, Dr. Suresh Bharadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Services, Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is for academic purpose only. If you want any kind of legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. Please do refer the original document of telemedicine practice guideline for reference and also look for MCI uh, website for any amendments. Many doctors are requesting me what are the hardware and software needs to be owned or to be subscribed before starting telemedicine practice. But however, please do remember telemedicine practice guideline 2020 which was released recently by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare do not discuss about this. Do not say what hardware to use, what software to use. And they are explicitly said that it excludes these issues. However, I would like to discuss what are the softwares which needs or which needs to be owned by a doctor before starting telemedicine consultation. See, technology approved under telemedicine guidelines are texting, messaging, email, phone call and video. Telemedicine guidelines have not banned any format of digital or else social media also. And even the telemedicine guidelines do not insist for HIPAA compliance. Basically, they have made sure any applications which can reach the patient has been considered and it is basically a patient-centric telemedicine guidelines. Further, the need of the hour is patient-friendly application. It is not what the doctor can hire, how complex or how comprehensive the guideline or what we call it as application should be. It should be as simple which a common man can use it easily. It, also, it includes uh, the application maybe like WhatsApp, Facebook, Skype, FaceTime, Google Duo, email, any video calling facilities can be used. The, again, I remind you, the telemedicine guidelines do not ban any social media platform or any email or any texting platform has not been banned. See, sir, you are talking about uh, various technology. If there is a breach in technology, what will happen? The telemedicine guideline is very clear. Doctors will not be held responsible for breach in confidentiality if there is a reasonable evidence to believe that patient's privacy and confidentiality have been compromised by a technology breach or by a person other than RNP. So it's, it's very crystal clear. The doctor will not be held responsible for hacking or data of breach by privacy by third party. The RNP should ensure that reasonable degree of care has been undertaken to hiring such services. That, that means the doctors will not be held responsible uh, for those technology uh, snags or hacks. That's what I can put across. So now the issue comes is what hardware and gadgets required for telemedicine consultation. See, I request the doctors not to invest heavily on the hardware or software uh, like many lakhs, crore rupees not required. Please invest in a hardware which is easy to use by you and also which can be easily used by the patient. See, the ecosystem should be patient friendly. This telemedicine consultation is basically done, kept in mind so that the patient from the rural area can be reached. Don't have a tech, don't come up with an application or an hardware which itself becomes a hindrance in reaching the patient. And also telemedicine consultation, hardware need to be simple and economical. Any common man can use. It is not the doctor who is using. It is not the doctor can afford. A laptop on a doctor's side and a smartphone on the patient is more than sufficient to run the uh, telemedicine consultation. That's what the telemedicine guidelines looks for. And coming to my last slide, the telemedicine ecosystem should be patient centric. It should be very simple very easy to use and it should be economical and training requirements for either to the doctor and patient should be as minimal as possible. Uh, my friends, uh, colleagues, please do understand this telemedicine guideline is patient centric and those whatever hardware and software which the patient can use it and it is patient friendly, please do adopt this and help our patients. Thank you very much.